Hello everyone. How's everyone doing today? It's Jean and it's Tuesday. So I meant to be here yesterday, but it just got to be one of those long days that I didn't get to spend with you. So I do apologize. So today what I want to share with you is what I've been doing um, for some of my projects that I've shown you lately. And one of the things is, of course, doing these collage papers. So the one that I have left is this one. And I did a new one, which is this one here. However, I'm going to make some updates to it with you um, in a moment. And then the last one I did is this one, which I love quite a bit, but I didn't have some of the colors that I thought. So I'm going to possibly add another color or two to this one. But the only two we really need to worry about are the ones that I did on the harder cardstock because I want to use them for some houses that I um, made. Previously, we made these wonderful little um, mixed media ATCs cards. They were so fun. And I hope some of you try that out because it makes, um, it make, it's, it's really a fun thing to do, especially if you have the time to draw and prepare your papers and things like that, which I will also explain in just a moment. So right now for this particular um, page, it was done on just a regular piece of cardstock. And at first I layered lots of papers and then I started layering color upon color. And this is probably three or four um, layers of color here. So the last thing I did is I stamped on these green leaves and I really want to and I put some gesso underneath so you could see the leaves better. But I got some paint today. My husband and my daughter picked out some paint for me. And this green looks so lovely. Um, it's called a uh, parakeet. Uh, and for me and what I do and the amount of actual painting that I do, I think that Apple Barrel or any type of cheap acrylic is fine with me. Um, there's Apple Barrel, there's Anita's. Um, I think Hobby Lobby has their brand of cheap which is called Crafter's Collection. I'm okay with the, the brands that come from Walmart. I don't need to have uh, fancy brands of acrylic paint to accomplish what I'm doing right now. Now, I would love to have a huge collection of Liquitex, that would be my ultimate dream. But for the time being, <laughs> I just think I'll stick with um, Apple Barrel. But what um, I have been doing, in addition to these collage strips, um, I'm sorry, pages, is actually making uh, what a lot of people refer to as fodder. Now, it's a new term for me, the word fodder. I think some people 
would um, refer to fodder as ephemera. I think it has a dual um, a dual role there as far as um, fodder and ephemera are concerned. But for me personally, ephemera and there's ephemera and then there's everything else. So for me, um, I am, I use the word ephemera pretty much for the true form for what it, what it is, which is when you use things that are either vintage, letters, things that are not meant to, to stay around like ticket stubs, etc. So that's what I refer to as fodder. So, so that's what I wanted to do with this piece. After I stamped on the leaves, I wanted to go over it with this kind of limey green. This almost is like a green apple. It's really a cool color. I like it a lot. So this is going to make the background even more interesting for this particular um, collage sheet. So I'm going to let this dry, which is pretty warm today. So it should dry relatively quickly. And let me just clean off here a little bit. So what I was referring to as fodder, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because the fodder actually goes with the collage sheet because we did these ATCs. So what I do when I create my fodder is I first take a book page. I'm not sure how that got in there. I first take a plain book page and I gesso it. I just take a dry brush and I gesso it. And the reason being is because, for example, this, partic this particular book, um, it was a book about recipes and we don't necessarily want recipes to show through on our fodder. So <laughs> I covered a lot of it up, but I took some time to draw different things that I can then color and cut out and not only do that, but add it to my next project that I'm gonna show you with the collage papers that are finished. So just going through these, I drew some of these flowers and you have some single ones that don't have stems. You have some that have stems. Here's a, a page full of different ones. And if you don't know how, to actually um, draw your flowers. There are great examples online. Um, I use Pinterest a lot to find ways to draw things like birds. Here I've drawn two birds and I stamped the images there. This one's just a puppy. I don't know why that's sticking in there. Here are some other mushrooms. Um, here I made hearts, butterfly, and a dragonfly. Um, more hearts. So you can do all kinds of things to create yourself some really cool and interesting Fodder. And then all you have to do is keep these pages in a separate box or book, and then you can work on them when you just have one of those down days and you can draw freely and come up with all kinds of flowers and leaf and bird and butterfly combinations. So. 
So what I did with our last scrapbook, scrapbook collage sheet is I took, um, let me see if I can find the little piece. So I was going through scraps and I found this small, it's almost like an index card size. And I thought that would be really great for the base of a house. So I took some of those pieces, as you can see here, and I put some fabric and lace pockets on them. And then I added some things from the collage sheet for the roof of my house. Here's another one that I created. So I picked out fabric and laces that would go together. This one I added a button to, and you can just stick things down in here if you want, so that they're more practical when you add them to your journal. This one's a larger one. I had some larger orange, and it has a pocket here, and it has like a belly band right here. And as you can see, I made now these are not necessarily finished, but these are the base idea. Here was the first one I made and I kept the index card the same size. And then I thought later, maybe I should have brought the roof down more, but I love this one and I'm gonna wor we'll work on it a little bit. This one is um, cut down so that I can add the roof. I haven't done that with this one, and I haven't done that with this one. So basically, for these particular projects, I picked out fabric and lace, and possibly, like on this one, some ribbon. Um, this is a piece of a doily. Uh, this is fabric and ribbon, and I use the extra piece of ribbon here. Um, this is lace and fabric, and this one is lace and fabric. So I sewed on the pocket first, so we would have a pocket to kind of work with. So if we're looking at this particular size, which... Um, is what a regular index page size would be. We could, um, put on, for example, I have here some pink fabric. So I could put that on. And then I have uh, let's see. I need something smaller to go on top of that. So, I could just add something like this if I wanted to, and you can add this before sewing and then sew this down together. If you don't, if you're not able to sew, you would just get out your glue. Let's see what glue I have here handy. That little thing's so funny, it always wants to fly off. I'm pretty sure this is an uh, uh, Lean's Tacky Glue. Doesn't want to come out. Maybe too thick for this bottle. Let me see where my white one is. That's the empty one. Oh, stars. Okay, here we go. This one um, it should be uh, the art glitter glue. I'm not sure if it got mixed with um, Elmer's by accident, but even if it did, that's okay. So we would take the glue and just make it go across the bottom 
and across and up the two sides if you don't have your sewing machine and there's no sewing really required you just have to be able to um, make yourself a little pocket here so let me pull this over and we'll flatten this out it wants to pull this way so let me bring it over some more and we'll just trim around it if we need to okay so while that is gluing we can take our little piece of trim that needs to be about that long so we'll cut it right here and you can either put it in the middle and kind of use it as a belly band like I've done on a lot of mine. Or you can just use it to trim the top. And I kind of like trimming the top on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and apply my glue to the top of the fabric and this should stick down our lace pretty well um, if you're looking a lot of people use fabric tack which is amazing as well but if you are looking for a multi-purpose glue the art glitter glue is really a nice glue to use now we're not putting that um, lace anywhere near the top because we don't want our pocket to be glued to the paper. We want to still have an option for a pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off because we don't need this part. And then we'll let it, we'll let it um, sit here for a moment to make sure everything's glued down well. And then I'm going to use some of this to make a roof. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to start over here where some of the colors kind of match. And how I do this is, first of all, I do trim this down a little bit. You don't have to be precise. Just trim that down. And then you want to turn this over and once you decide what um, side you're going to use, which we're going to use this side up here. We want to make sure that um, if you want a roof that's overhanging, you want to leave a little bit of room here and here. So we have probably a half inch here and a half inch here. So we're going to turn our house this way though because this is the way the house is gonna go. So if we keep those measurements and then we just kind of draw even um, a squarish roof, any kind of roof, tall or short, and then we'll cut this out and hopefully with our measurements, we'll have a little bit of an overhang and then we'll also have this little funky kind of dip in our, our roof. Now, when we made these um, collage papers, Remember, we use some water on them. So you may have to go back and see if you need to re-glue anything. That seems to be the only thing really that needs to be 
re-glued. And then I'm just gonna trim the bottom right here because it's got, it has some yellow and I don't want that yellow from the base color to show through. So then I'm just gonna put my house roof right here on top of this card. Just put some glue. You only need to glue this one part and you glue it right on here. So now not only do you have, let me just make sure this is straight. I tell you, this glue's good. It's got it sticking down already, so just make sure it is straight. It might not be since I cut that yellow off, but we're good. So here we have the, the roof and we have our little pocket. Now I wanted to, um, introduce then some of these little things that we made previously that I made that are, um, I already cut out. They're not colored yet, but let's say, for example, on one of these, like this one's a really big one. Let's say we wanted to add, um, a bird to it. We could definitely add a bird right there. I think I would add him so that his feet would be right at the bottom. Could definitely add him there. And then on the one we just finished, this is a flower. So we want to make sure that when we're adding these pieces that it doesn't interrupt your ability to still use the pocket. So that would probably have to go at the top, which you can kind of look at these like they're almost, um, how do I want to say it? Let me put these two out of the way until we're ready to do them. We can almost look at these houses as if they're kind of um, two-story building. So if we wanted to just put something um, minimal on there so that it doesn't detract from the design, I think that would be good. Like on this one, I th certainly think that this one would look really nice with a heart. Now this one needs a, um, a roof to, doesn't necessarily need a roof, but I had been cutting out, um, little roof pieces for the doors, which you don't have to do. And these um, one of the ways to kind of make your door stand out is to put some hinges on them. So since these, this kind of all um, looks the same, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little brown pieces and just put them on right here. And fiddle fennel. Well, you want to use tweezers because you're being precise and then you can't grab it by the tweezers. Typical. Okay, so these kind of look like hinges. And even though the glue is coming out, I'm going to press it down a little bit better because I want, I want to, that glue will dry clear then. So let me hold this up and see. Okay, so that makes the door um, stand out a little better. And we can also use some of this and I can make a little, a little 
little circle thing here or half circle. For the door, Now, one thing I would advise is when you're adding things like hinges, doorknobs, etc., you can go ahead and draw those things or even add um, buttons or other hardware that you may have available. I love it when I can use things like um, nails or... Hmm. Safety pins. There's all kinds of little things that you can use, especially if you have access to a some old sewing boxes. You sometimes get some very interesting things. So I'm going to put this doorknob on the top of this so that it kind of looks like below it is a keyhole. But the more you put on the top of your house, it is going to affect what you can put in your pocket. Now this pocket's pretty loose, so we could um, definitely put this bird in here if we wanted to put a bird in there. We could also make ourselves some really cute little tags to go in there, just like this. Just something plain maybe for writing. You could also use something like this and put this in. Now, I don't mind that, but I think it is a little busy. So you have already collage here and then you're putting another piece of collage in. But here is a great way to accentuate the door so it's not um, being swallowed by the other designs. Another thing that will help you with doing that is if you choose to make your door of plain paper. I chose to make mine of decorative paper and that's another reason why you're seeing um, that it looks like the the door wasn't standing out previously. Now on this one, um, because I like to use pretty much every piece of what I cut, I cut some of the triangles to go over this door, and then I cut some, a triangle to go over this door, and I also put another little triangle here on top of this. So as you have your scraps, and then see this one has a plain door, as you have your scraps, you can then um, put different things on like this one was a scrap piece I used for a chimney and this one was a scrap piece I used for a chimney so it's it's all um, you know you spend your time you make your collage and you want to make sure that not only is is your collage being used for what your purpose is, but you want to make sure that you can use all the pieces you possibly can and not waste any of them. So let me see how this is, looks like it's drying okay. I'm gonna stick this card down in it and see. So it's okay, it needs to be dried a little, it needs to be glued a little bit here. So we'll glue it a little bit on the side and we'll glue it a little bit on this side. There we go. So we have our glued one. Now, what can we do with our glued one so it, it 
it can mimic that it's been sewn. Now, each of the ones that I have sewn previously, I've done with a lighter color of thread. So you don't have to worry about a situation where you have the thread sticking out or being highlighted um, through the sewing. But with something like this, you could use a white paint marker to mimic the stitches if you wanted. Let's see if this one will work for me. So you could just do some dashes and some dots and dashes and dots and dashes and that kind of mimics that sewing. So that's like a faux sewing technique that you can use. Dash dot, dash dot, dash dot. It's also very, um, it's also a very cool technique to use on your um, fodder pieces. So let's go ahead, now that we've made our house, um, defined our door, let's go ahead and add some of these fodder pieces. But first of all, I want to color them. So um, let's put our houses over here a little bit because I want you to be able to see. And let me get something like this. My husband brought me some great supplies today. I can't wait to use all my colors of paint. Okay, so I'm. this is just a piece of watercolor paper. And when I drew this heart, I went around the edge and just filled in some black blocks. And you know that normally when I draw or write, I'm using my uniball. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint this the standard red color. Now because the because of the gessoed part on this, you're not going to see the color be as vibrant. And that's okay. I think it looks really interesting the way it is. Now, these are wa watercolor markers, so they will react to water. So if you wanted to give this a spray and see how it would color the whole thing, you can. And I have enough of these that I don't mind spraying this one and taking a look and see what it does. So basically just with that one little spray, you can see that it's, the color is spreading out some. And if we do a little dab, you can see that it really lightens up even more. This piece right here, I'm not sure what that is. That could be like a piece of glue or something, a bit of glue or something that caused that to be so dark. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to paint my heart red. And these markers again are the Primrosia. So if you decide to get these, they're very, very nice. Um, they color very well, and I love the the lighter side. Um, I think 
is my favorite because I'm sorry, the brush side is my favorite because it it really makes it nice. And just use a light hand with the brush, just like you would with a normal brush. And you'll see that you'll get a nice color and coverage. I'm gonna just go over this part right here a little bit more. I haven't tried too much blending, but let me try a little darker red and see what happens. Okay, it just makes it a richer color, that's all. Okay, so we're gonna leave it like that, and I added it to that house where we did our faux sewing. And so that house is ready to go in a journal if you're satisfied with it like that. You can certainly um, attach these different ways. Since they're not finished on the back, you may want to attach them directly to the page, or you may want to add them with a paper clip. The only thing I think with the paper clip is I would pre-fill whatever you're going to put in here first. Otherwise, if you're putting stuff in and out of those pockets, you're going to find that it's not going to stay on a paper clip very well. So, there's that. Now, this, there's one other one here I wanted to, okay, this one. So, on this one, it's got a pretty crazy looking roof. And that's what's fun about these is you can make all kinds of designs for the roof. So, let's make this bird be kind of a blue. Let's see what happens here if we make him this kind of blue. So he's also done on gessoed book paper. And I did some stamping just to try to maybe give him some texture down here that it would look like feathers or something. I don't think I really had the right stamp, but it looks okay. And down at the bottom, I'm gonna try to be darker and then lighter up here if I can. Let me see, I have a lighter blue right here. This is what I always call periwinkle blue. Okay, so that blends in nicely. And then we'll, we'll use some darker blues um, for his tail feather. And sometimes they even have like a little I'm not gonna put too much, but like a little red or pink or something in there. Um, we'll see how that reacts. And then there's one more blue that I'm going to use for his tail feathers. Okay, everything looks really good there. He's so cute. Let me 
make sure all the pieces are. And then for his spindly legs, we will use, this is kind of a yellowish brown. And then we need a yellow for his beak. There we go. I think sometimes uh, one of the other cute things about doing fodder is, is going outside the line. So you don't have to stay inside the line and it's still, you know, you don't have to make it that perfect. So this guy, I'm just determined to put him right there. So let me put some glue on his feet because I don't want his feet, I want his feet to stay in place. So I'm determined to put him right here on this house. And you know, bird houses are like two stories too. So sometimes they can be bird houses. And I love, love, love that this birdie is bigger or as big as the roof because I'll tell you why. It makes it look more whimsical like that. So let me put some glue under here. There we go. And on this one, is this one where I wanted to put the flower? I think it might really need it. So I'm gonna glue it first and then I will see what color I want to make it. So it's almost like these, the things don't have to exactly make sense. You just put on what you really like. So we've already used blue and pink. So let's try this purple color and see how that will go with this black and white checkered. And I, I love these markers. I have um, a hard time controlling a brush to be able to go in between some of these smaller spaces. And so that because I have these watercolor pens, it's so much easier. And you can get watercolor pens um, markers pretty inexpensive on Amazon um, so you don't have to buy the same brand that I buy or that somebody else buys um, like I mentioned I think the only reason I got these even though I had been eyeing them for a while um, was because I saw them on sale now, that's another thing. Um, don't be necessarily guided by um, packaging. Packaging, you know, is very important. And I think that's one of the reasons why I liked these because the packaging was so nice, but you can get a set that might have an, um, an, they have some that have an oriental name or an Asian name that are just as effective and will do the exact same thing. So don't think you have to get, like I said, the exact same ones I got. 
So there, I just love that. I hope you guys are enjoying it too. And then, like we were talking about before, we can take this white and we can even make it more interesting. I'm probably not gonna do a whole lot to this particular flower because it already has the checkered leaves. Bird doesn't really need anything. This needs a doorknob, so I'm gonna make it white. I think that looks really cute. And we have our heart over here. The heart kind of, because we made it wet, it really did, um, fade out some. So I may end up correcting that later. Let's see what else we have. So we have this house and this one, I don't know what else I have cut out. I have this big bird. He's awful big for this house, isn't he? Probably not any bigger than the other one, but he really takes a lot of the roof. Let me see what else I have that I can put on here. That's why I love having a great selection so that I can determine what I'm gonna put where. Here's a butterfly, we could do this one and also a dragonfly. Let's see, make sure this, some of my paper is thicker than others and I think I have more than one page. Sorry guys, you'll have to see me cut this out. And my friend Kim says, I know it's like watching glue dry or paint dry, she'll say. So yes, making these little checkered borders are very much um, a whimsical doodle type design that will look nice on your fodder. So many great fodder artists out there. I don't really know who started this, but um, And I'm sure none of my designs are original. The only thing that I know is that they are all hand-drawn and nothing is copied by um, tracing or anything like that. I don't use tracing paper. I just look at a design that I like, and if I can reproduce it, I do. If I can't, then it goes into the pile to be regessoed. Because believe me, I have a couple of those. I was having a hard time doing birds this morning. Okay, now this butterfly is probably going to be almost as big as the bird was, huh? I wonder if I should just cover up this heart and put this butterfly over here. We could do that because that heart looks pretty sad. Let's do that. So what color do we want our butterfly? Let's do some oranges. Do some orange. Oh, this is a very light orange. Okay. Let me go over this side. That 
that's one thing when they're cut out, they're a little bit more difficult to color. So if you color them and then cut them out, I think that would be a better idea. I forgot. Okay, and then something else that's orange. Let's see if this is a little darker. No, but it's definitely like a sherbet. I was telling my husband um, I wanted sherbet after he brought me all these colors because the colors are called toasted marshmallow, tangerine cream, fruit punch, um, what's this one? Oh, that's a magenta. And this one was, this one's called, that one's just a red, but there was one I thought that was called, oh, lime tree. And I was thinking, man, I would love to have some lime sherbet. I love fruit flavored sherbets. Doesn't have to be the fancy kind, just sherbet. A lot of people use sherbet nowadays to make mixed drinks, but I like to just eat it like ice cream. It might be less fattening. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so there is our butterfly. He's got some orange. I'm wondering if we should take a black marker and just put him some... squares here. They have such beautiful designs. I could never. And then I want to take, let me see, I might have my black marker over here. Yes. I'm going to take the black marker and go up the middle. Or gray. I'm not sure which one this is. Okay, so we decided we're gonna put it over this. So we will do that. And we'll have to take our, and then anything we put in, we'll have to watch that we don't catch that. And, um, Rip it. I'll glue it down over here. There we go. That's cute. I like that better. And that poor sad heart. Okay, this one, we still didn't decide what we were gonna do with that one. This one, I think, um, I think just a floral on this one would be nice. Let me see. Um, let me do this page. Okay, so I am going to take in this color, in these colors, I just really love the, the blues. The blues are amazing. Just such pretty colors. And I think it's worth it to get a set that has 
more than just the primary colors because like I said, depending on what brand you get, I don't know how well um, the mixing would be of the colors. I'm just going to try. I thought this would be a darker. It's kind of different. That was probably meant to be red. Oh well, that's a great thing about doodle art. You can make it any color you want to make it. So there's a flower for that one. And I think we'll use this silly bird up here and we are going to do him in um, some kind of red or orange red. <laughs> I think I'm going to put some yellow in there. I was talking about this the other day. It's funny how our brains decide what color we're gonna use, what position we're gonna put a piece of collage paper in. You know, it's miraculous, really, how our brains can decide that. We were marvelous. We were made marvelously by God's hand. That's why. So he gives us the ability to see and enjoy all those beautiful colors. He didn't have to. We could still live our life in black and white, you know? When you think about it, we certainly could. And we wouldn't and we wouldn't know any difference. But we were given the option to see with color. So it makes everything else so much more beautiful. Okay, this is a little birdie. We'll put him on one house and then we'll put the flower on the other. And that way we will have used some of our fodder on some of our crazy collage pages we made. And I think they make great houses. I'm um, going to make a couple more of them so they'll be on different, um, they'll be used for different things, so. Okay, dude, I don't want to cut your legs off. Okay, so we are putting him on this house. Mm -hmm. He looks so cute. I don't know. We'll just... Or do we want him on this house? He looks cute on this one. Kind of cute on this one, but he's too big for that one. Okay, so let's just take this little chickadee. Chickadee dee dee. I don't know why, but... what. I've always liked chickadees. We have them here in the, I mean, I'm sure we have them all the time, but 
we see them mostly in the winter time and they're so such cute little birds a chickadee -dee. so we'll put him on here and he looks fabulous doesn't he look cute right on there okay so this guy then is going to get this flower. Now his the stem may be too long, so we'll check it out. I love these blues. So thank you to anybody that has that has shared their drawings on Pinterest or other places so that I can learn how to draw. I don't know how anybody, unless you were a fine artist where you were extremely, extremely talented, how you could ever copy anybody's work anyway, because, because it's done with your own hand. There's no way that it would ever be identical to someone else's. Okay, this looks good on here actually because of that blue roof. So let me glue this down. I may have to trim the stem. I'm not sure, but I'm going to put it down right here. No, we'll just leave the stem like that. So there you go, guys. We have the little blue house. And we have you know what, these would be so cute into like finishing them off, is to take, I have a whole bunch of Tim Holtz people here. So let's say we took this woman and we put her in here and then she finished off that house. That is so cute. And then let's see what else we have. Here we have a very proper lady. Where should she go? We will put her in this house. How about that? I love it. And then we have, who these four sisters. I don't have a house big enough for four sisters, I don't think. This one almost is, but I don't think they'll fit down in there. That's too much for that. We will make this house for two brothers. There we go. That looks good. And the butterfly house, we will make for this cute little princess girl that I've seen 500 times. And then, um, okay, so we have this one. Do we have all of them? Okay, so we have all of them and each of them have um, a Tim Holtz person and each of them has a piece of our artwork. So I'll show you them one by one. We have this one, which is the blue house. We're calling the blue house. We have this proper lady in here. This one is, is our ballerina. So this is going to be our fun. This is our fun butterfly house. There she is. This one is the gentleman's home with the cool bluebird on it. 
they look dapper in there. This one, this is a proper lady, but some of the kids don't like her because she gets grouchy and she gets them with her umbrella stick if they're not good. And then we have one more and we'll put this lovely lady in here. And this lady, she actually, um, did I show that on? I must have sewed that on. Or there must be glue somewhere. Okay, here we go. This lady, she actually makes um, strawberry jam and the kids come over every day after school to get, she doesn't fit in there all the way, but we can still have another lady make strawberry jam. This lady, she makes strawberry jam and the kids come over and get strawberry jam um, on the leftover bread from the bread sale for the day after school. So she's the nice lady that gives the kids strawberry jam. This is a grouchy lady that doesn't like that walking in her flower garden. <laughs> These two gents, they just stay out of everybody's business, so they don't really care. This young lady, she's just concentrating on being the queen. And the lady in the blue house, she reads your tea leaves. So there we go. We have our houses. We have our people to go with them and our designs and we can add them to our journal at any time and I hope you found this a fun project and you enjoyed it I did and remember if not anything else be kind to yourselves and mostly be kind to others bye for now